A very good morning to all the participants for this day four uh, webinar we conducted by Vardasan University Entrepreneurship, Innovation and Career Hub. Myself, uh, Dr. Preeti Agarajan, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Science, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Thiruvadu. And today, we are going to elaborate on networking and internet and IoT. Before we proceed to the topic, we'll discuss the course structure of it is framed. And day one, we discussed on introduction to Internet of Things. We have seen many examples to understand what is Internet of Things. Day two, we had elaborate discussion on IoT architecture. Day three, we discussed on IoT clouds, analytics, visualization. And today, we're going to discuss on networking and Internet in IoT. Tomorrow, we're going to discuss the research trends in the Internet of Things. Before we proceed to the today's topic, we'll have a quick recap on day three. And yesterday, we discussed in detail about what is big data, what is cloud, and how this cloud is related with big data. I uh, to understand uh, and to remember easily, I have marked uh, an analogy to this IoT big data and cloud. I said that the IoT is a king, big data is a queen, and the cloud is a palace. We also derived the relationship between the IoT and the cloud with various parameters. And we have a brief discussion on uh, various IoT cloud platforms. We have also shown a demonstration on how this IBM IoT cloud platform is helping us to collect the sensor data. We, have a, we had a discussion on IoT analytics lifecycle. Uh, again, we seen a demonstration video on how this IoT cloud platform is also helping us to do analytics process. Lastly, we discussed about various visualization techniques that is available in the data analytics. And, uh, today, we're going to discuss the networking and the internet in IoT. Before proceeding in detail, I, I will just discuss the overall uh, structure of how networking and IoT is being done. So we have many sensors, and uh, these sensors will keep on uh, emitting the data as and when it is programmed. So this data from the sensors need to be communicated to the IoT cloud. As I said yesterday, the cloud are the place where we store the data from the internet as well as from the IoT devices. So the data from the sensor somehow need to be transmitted to the gateway. So we need some kind of mechanism in R, we need some kind of protocols that will help us or enable to transmit the data from the sensor to the gateway. So this is uh, being done by the IoT protocol. Next, from the gateway again to the network server, we need a protocol which is helping us to transfer the data from the gateway to the network server. Now for this, we use the standard uh, TCP IP protocol. Again, from the network server to the application server. Application server here I'm saying is that nothing but the cloud server. Again, from the network server, it has to be transferred to the cloud server. Again, for this transference of data from the network to the application server is being taken place by the TCP IP. So you all know how this TCP IP is being worked. We will have discussion, though we all know we'll have a discussion how this TCP IP is tuned to work in this IoT protocol. And we'll have an elaborate discussion on various IoT protocols that is available currently. So before uh, we go, we'll discuss why we need networks. That's very important part. Before uh, you proceed anything, it's always good to ask why we need to do so. So in this slide, uh, we are going to talk about networking and uh, you know that networking is the future of all internet optics. I said there are uh, two important components in any device. One is nothing but intelligent, another is nothing but the network. So networking is a very ultimate core of internet of things and we will discuss here why it is needed and how it is helpful we will also discuss about the general structure of network and some broad categories of the network so again a question is why we need to have network we all know that this iot is a smart device when they say small smart device it will have some future by which it will give access to the various outside world the network will enable the device to connect to the outside world so the internet of things may be uh, a 
mobile phone, smartphone, camera, or a car. Whatever it is, the fact is that it connects on a larger network means that from the smaller device. From the small mobile device, you can able to connect to a large database or whatever it be with the help of the network. You can access much more powerful server. If you're having a network, you can access a much more powerful server or you can even access the database. You can access all that through this device when it is connected to the internet. And having all access, the computational power and all the data, it can be used from the cloud will help us or leverage us to enhance a lot of device and improve its future. For example, take the cars. Let's say uh, the car uh, is a smart car where we have uh, some kind of internet of uh, thing device in it. If the cars communicate among themselves, which will help us to have a smooth ride. If a car is on the road able to communicate among themselves, car one is communicating with car two, and so that the speeds are get adjusted and the roads and traffic will be free and you can drive very smoothly. If you have a cars communicating among each other, so that will improve the hazardless, congestionless road. So won't it be great that if we have a cars that will be talking to each other on the network so that they can plan their own routes and consider the fact the cars were planning on their own automatic car, own driving. A car will drive by itself. We need not have an human intervention to drive a car. So they will collaborate together to make the smooth and hazardless free driving, which by the way is possible and probably will make happen a decade by now. You can expect to have a smart less. Now it has been introduced in US, but to have it around the world, it will take uh, around a decade. So, it's an example where uh, you are enhancing the future of a car by simply using the network. So, and so they can talk to each other, they can uh, also talk to the centralized database and get the mapping information and things like this. One more uh, benefits of attaching a network is that nowadays we are all tend to play games. That's why we are spending this uh, COVID-19 day. We used to play a lot of online games, now even online drama is available. So, this, uh, a lot of online game, in fact, it's a larger segment uh, where you cannot uh, play by yourself. So when you play online, you have to connect with people around the world. For example, if you play PUBG, you do not know whether the counter player, which is also playing with you, he's from India or he's from abroad. But you will get a rich gaming experience out of it when you, you play a games uh, through online. Of course, if you want to kill time, you can play, otherwise. No. So those games you play online uh, opens a whole uh, world for you and you can connect to different people and all sorts of extra things that you could cannot do locally in one machine. And you can also able to access, if you have a network connected to your smartphone, you can also access a lot of media libraries. For example, uh, Netflix or Amazon Instant Player. Whatever library you are using, you can access those. Maybe you're using a TV, even a smart TV, as an internet device. Whenever I want to hear some song and uh, I need not wait for uh, uh, some channels to play it. I can go to YouTube via the smart TV, I can type whatever songs I need and I can listen to the song at the right moment whenever I want to have it. Because that device is a smart device, it is being connected to the internet. So you have to connect uh, the smart de uh, device or uh, the IoT device to the network to have a wonderful experience and it will enhance the capability of the device also. The communication between the Internet of Things and uh, the server, maybe the resources is uh, usually done with the help of uh, the client server architecture. So the below uh, figure given in the slide is uh, all about uh, the client server architecture in detail. The client sends a request to the server and the server will in turn process the request received uh, from the client and uh, it will serve the request of the client. So the communication between the Internet of Things and the network mainly is usually done with the help of the client server model. So the client would uh, be the Internet of Things device here, which is connected to the network. And that's a very smaller machine, relatively 
we can't expect much computation power from the IoT device. And uh, we need to connect that to some server. And you say that in the middle of the server, uh, there is a guarding protecting some resources. So giving access, let's say, to the resources is enabled uh, uh, by the help of this internet. The resources can be any kind of resources, maybe maybe the web server or the storage uh, cloud server. And the data from the web pages is in the resource or something like that. And the server gives access to the resources to so the client, which might be the internet of the device that is communicating, making request of the server to get whatever appropriate information is. The server that really manages the resources here. So it handles a request from the client here, nothing but the IoT device. Get whatever it is that is needed from the resource and sends it back the form of a response to the client. The client which is nothing but here, the internal of thing, device. And maybe you see a web page or uh, you have whatever data you are looking for or you get the movie that you want to look for or something like that. So the client server model is very common. The client is actually generally less powerful, which cannot be able to do the task. And that's why it sends a request to the server, which has a huge capacity. And that is done with the help of uh, the request and uh, response submission. So the client is generally a smaller machine, very, very low in its capacity of power. It's very slower. But the server can be very large cloud server, very powerful, plugged directly into the wall and has a lot of power. It has a cooling fan and all things, because since it has to process a lot, we definitely have a cooling fan. So you can say, and the server is allowed in whatever the client request, it will be given by the server. If you meet maybe a disk, or it may be a server, or it may be uh, the processing, uh, parallel processing unit, or whatsoever. So typically the model that you see here is that how the Internet of Things device communicate with the network. Uh, there will be a single server or one or more clients. There are different versions how it can be done. Server provides service for all clients. Server manager resources. Server responds to the request from the client. Next, we have uh, LAN and WAN. So now we've seen how the client uh, and server communicate with each other. We'll see how this connection between the client and server can take place. So there are three uh, broad classes of network. Uh, the first is LAN, that's nothing but the local area network. The figures here given in the first figure is nothing but the, uh, the Ethernet cable, which is an uh, example of a LAN. And uh, it's just a relatively small network. LAN is generally a small network. And it usually spans uh, within uh, a building uh, or within a campus. And uh, you can use just one uh, LAN local area network or even maybe the floor of a building. And typically the way you access this network is either through your wall or through your wall socket or uh, the ethernet jack in the wall. Also Wi-Fi routers. Uh, I see uh, uh, most of you might have been used somehow uh, the Wi-Fi, the smart device. So local area network is commonly for a building, generally it's generally common for a building or relatively very small sized organization. Now, on the other hand, there is also a wide area network. Uh, that is another extreme of uh, the LAN. This wide, land, a wide area network, the best example uh, we can give for uh, wide area network is the internet itself. That's, that is an extremely, uh, other end of an example, it's extremely wide area network. And a wide area network is just a lot more complex. Yeah. And the functionality of WAN is much more uh, uh, complicated than the local area network because we have more number of devices connected and obviously the devices connected is more than the complexity will be more and the functionality will be more. There is a hierarchy of machines that are communicating together in the wide area network. So in wide area network, we have uh, different classes of network than a uh, local area network and we have so many protocols in it. And the internet is basically uh, the wide area network that we are talking about. So internet is the best example for uh, Wide area network and for the LAN, we can say the connection between the first same floor or in the same building or in the same campus, it can be treated as a LAN example. 
Next, we are going to see on MANET. So, MANET stands for a Mobile Hard Arc Network. So, this uh, MANET is especially suited for uh, IoT devices, you know, because the devices are moving here and there. So, if the network structure is not concrete, static, it's dynamic. So, Mobile Hard Arc Network, otherwise called as MANET, they are actually important, uh, very, very important uh, in uh, Internet of Things aspects. So Internet of Thing components, uh, because uh, it's very important here, because we have largely mobile device in IoT. Uh, mobile device, or you can say largely mobile device. Here, uh, you know the mobile term, right? Mobile uh, is the one thing which is not static. It will move uh, with respect to different places at different times. And a lot of Internet of Things device are uh, mobile. And it is an ad hoc network because uh, it con reconfigures itself constantly. We can say whenever you have uh, this mobile uh, devices connected to the internet, then the, the network structure is very dynamic. And uh, we can say this has an ad hoc network and the structure will reconfigure itself constantly. So it may be an internet of things or a cell phone, let's say, uh, which comes into the range of a network, then it joins a network. Suppose imagine there is a network which they have uh, 10 devices already connected and a new device which is falls under this range will also get connected to this. So again, the network structure change. Or you uh, have a smartphone and connected to internet uh, in the first block of a building. And if you continue to walking out of the building and you're moving to another building, then uh, you will not be there in the previous building. Uh, your, your connection will not be there uh, in the previous building. Now you'll be connected to the new building in which you have moved on. So the network uh, reconfiguration will be done in a very few seconds and uh, you, you will not be able to see that and you will not be able to notice that you have uh, changed the network because it will be done so smoothly that you will not even notice. So whenever you see uh, this ad hoc network, uh, uh, then it says about the dynamic uh, structure of the network and a lot of internet of thing uh, devices are part of a network like uh, that of a manet and you need different set of protocols for this manet network and you have to assume some of the things are mobile and uh, so we need uh, uh, the power since because the, the mobility or the structure of the network changes. So power is a constant here because usually you are battery driven. If you're a mobile, uh, if you take a smart mobile phone and it usually functions on the, the battery, and there is no battery, you're not able to do anything on the mobile. So uh, since because the mobile device moves from place to the places, it has to take efforts to connect to one network. Whenever it is moving out of the range on a network one, it has to get connected to the network two. So for which it needs more amount of power. Mobile, of course, uh, nowadays mobile comes, uh, if you put a charge, it can last for two days. But considering the IoT device, which has a very less uh, power uh, storage, and um, if you want to change from one network to another network, it will be a little tough task. So we have a different classes of algorithm uh, for managed to handle those kind of issues. Basically, this is uh, for IoT devices. And next, we have uh, a LAN. Uh, the LAN, you know, it's a local area network. And uh, picture portraits uh, how the different posters are connected with the help of a switch. So the internet is a wide area network, as I've given as an example. Uh, and for the LAN, I've given the connection between a building is an example of a LAN. So that's uh, generally the network uh, that we want to communicate. Uh, we just need to connect the devices and that connection is known as the network. So now we're going to talk uh, the general structure of uh, wide area network. The picture uh, or uh, given here, it's pretty high level and uh, that will give you the general picture of what uh, the wide area network, uh, that is the internet will look like. So the wide area network is a network, it's a combination of local area network. When a club, uh, two or three land, then I can say that's a wide area network. So if you think about the internet, it's really hard hoc, hard hoc in a sense it is dynamic. There is no regularity, uh, meaning like right now, if you want to do, I could build a network right here in this building and it will be added to the internet. And I can also name, uh, give a name and it would be a part of the internet. And so the internet isn't one of these network that controlled and well structured. So unlike this local area network that you can see at the place of work uh, or at a school, 
you have some IT department or an IT crew, they and they constrain how the things are put in there. They always uh, look every time a machine comes in here, you have got to register in this way. Suppose we go to an office and uh, directly you cannot, even though there is a Wi Fi connectivity, you can directly able to connect it. You have to go to the IT support wing that will enable you to connect your laptop to the Wi Fi connection. That's what I'm trying to say here. So every time you have to go to the IT group and uh, you have to register in them to get the internet connectivity. So they only approve of, uh, uh, only if they're based on the approval, you can able to connect the internet when you go into corporate offices. And they put the equipment in the building for you and all that. So it is very structured, but generally wide area, uh, the internet specifically is pretty unstructured, right? The land, as I say, land and an organization, it is very structured, whereas in internet, it is uh, usually unstructured. And there is some minimal uh, structure uh, that has to be um, to, uh, in order to maintain efficiently, but it's really unstructured. So at the low level, uh, or at the leaf level, the local area network level, there can be any number of different local uh, network types involved in the internet. Just depending on whatever uh, people want locally. So you start off with the local area network and you have got uh, our own uh, uh, local area network and you have got several hosts, host one, host two, and host three, and uh, that is given in the figure. And all these hosts, such as the conferential devices that on a network. So basically, uh, the IoT devices and uh, and they are all communicating with a component. A hub is a network component uh, that have several input ports. A port is a way by which uh, the device communicate with the outside world. So we are assuming uh, everything is wired right now, and this can also be done wirelessly. But uh, for us up now, we'll take uh, the wired component into picture for the discussion. So the wired component has got lots several input ports and uh, several output ports. And uh, you can see here, you have uh, three ports where the host one and two, well, the switch which is given in the figure has three ports and all the three ports are connected. Port one is connected to host one, port two is connected to host two, and port three is connected to host three. So, uh, any time a packet is sent on for the port, it is reflected or it is copied to all other ports. So whenever a packet comes to the switch, it will just broadcast the packet to whatever host which is connected to it. So if one host sends a message to anybody, the same is uh, split out or the same is sent out to all the three hosts. So both of them get the message and uh, that's what the hub does. But if you have a switch, in this example, we have a switch. But then if it is hub, then it will transfer the messages. If a message is sent for host two, it will send for all the hosts which is connected to the hub. Whereas in a switch, it is much more intelligent. So it look at the packet header to see where this packet is being designated for. So if the host one sends a message to the switch and, it, and the switch will look at the destination and uh, based on the destination, it will just send the packet to the destination alone. Instead, it will not send to the other Host which is not for which the packet is intended. For example, if I send a, a packet for host to two, the switch will send only to host to two, it will not send to host one and three. The switch is here uh, smart enough to know that the message should be only to send uh, to the intended host. We can say that uh, by this view, we can conclude that the switch is much more intelligent and uh, it will decide where exactly the message has to be intended. But whereas uh, hub is not so. So generally, LAN look like uh, this, uh, this larger LAN will look like uh, internet with support multiple protocols. So we can uh, combine the, this uh, different host with the help of a bridge. The next slide, we're going to discuss on a larger LAN. So the figure uh, contains uh, two different sets of components in it. And uh, these components are uh, clubbed as a LAN and you can uh, easily connect them with the help of a bridge. The bridge is the component which uh, helps us to connect 
this different LAN, LAN A and LAN B. So the wide area network is a set of this uh, LAN and all these two put together, which can be connected with the help of private class. So if you look at this network, this is the way uh, that is uh, vastly simplified internet. But uh, you got a bunch of LANs and they are all communicating to the routers. And then the routers can communicate with each other to pass on the data. So one LAN can communicate with a completely different LAN through these routers. So if you notice, every message is sent from one machine to another has to make many jumps to reach the destination. It has to go through several different machines before it reaches the destination. So if you want to go from one LAN to another, you might leave this LAN and go to this router, then go to the another router, and another router, and then finally reach the destination LAN, and then to the host. So there is a sequence of hops. It is called, the, generally the hops are called as uh, routes, and uh, that you go through to reach the destination. And so with this router, they are organized. This is very simple, and this is only three, but the reality is uh, it will be uh, having the vast hierarchy of the routers, and they have intelligent protocol that determine where they should send the packet next to reach the destination more quickly and to avoid congestion. You don't want to have one router that receives much data. See, that the workload has to be ultimately shared. That is what the ultimate purpose, right? That can be done much simple here. So you don't want to have only one router that receives too much data. Maybe all of the messages running through this one router, you would like to spread out the data across the entire network so that one router cannot be targeted with so much of workload. So there are a lot of protocols which is being available on this line. So that will share the workload of the router on the internet, involves this protocol like that to make out it just not congested. Next, we are to going to talk about uh, the OIDN network, which will connect uh, the LANs. For example, here see the two LANs are connected by the routers. They discussed here. Both of things which I discussed have been shown in this slide. The two LAN are being connected by the routers. Next, we are going to discuss on the internet structures. As I said, internet is highly ad hoc. So we are going to discuss a little bit more about the internet and the structure and uh, we'll slowly get into the internet protocols. And uh, you know that the protocols are nothing but a set of uh, rules that enable us to facilitate the communications. So when you make our IoT device, uh, that is nothing but the hardware, we will uh, try to match it with a particular protocol. So we will pick the protocol and we will pick the hardware to match that. So protocol, uh, picking the protocol for the particular IoT device itself is a very big task and that protocol should also match your application. You have to choose the correct protocol, correct device for your application. That's a very crucial part in any IoT project. So we'll pick the protocol and the, pick the hardware to match that. So we need to know at the least the existence of the protocol. So internet is a ad hoc and uh, that is highly irregular, right? And people can join the network and leave the network at any time. It can grow leaps and bounds. So I can open a laptop, for example, I can open the laptop uh, right in my room and suddenly I will be part of the internet, right? And people can send messages to it. And then if I shut it off, then it's now temporary on my laptop and I will not be connected to the internet. So the internet is, what I'm trying to say is that internet is very dynamic. Somebody can build a new network right now, plug it into the wall, and there is a new addition to the network. And this happens all the time. So this has highly unpredictable structure, but still it has to work. Actually, it's pretty amazing that it works so well, given the fact that it's uh, very, very dynamic. So it can be changed by anyone at any time. So you have to be able to send message between these wide variety of network types and they should reach the correct destination. So we've got this LAN that maybe use different protocol, uh, routers that are speaking different protocol and the destination LAN, it speaks a different protocol. 
and so you have got uh, that you are able to constantly send messages regardless of this protocol used by different networks it means you have to set up that, that you have to uh, we have to uh, make this communication uh, very smooth irrespective that transmits to different protocols it has to reach its destination so i don't know what type of protocol uh, my lan is going to use all i want to know is that i want to send a message to a machine on a particular ran so you have a little structure but uh, you still have to have some level of uniformity so that everybody can talk in the network next is a uh, internet protocol we are going to discuss extensively on the internet protocol so how it is possible to send the bits a bit size sense means that the messages across this network which is highly dynamic with a different protocol and makes different jumps across as many routers many networks to reach the destination so we will discuss in detail about the protocols the protocols are basically as i said it's a set of rules or rules of communication if you are talking about for the network protocol it's a, a strictly defined uh, communication uh, there is a lot of uh, rules hoping a minimum set of rules which as long as everybody had adhered to the rules everybody can communicate maybe a strict rule but then if everyone who is there on the part of the network if they agree then there is no problem even though the rule is tough for it's simple if everybody uh, who is part of the network if they agree to use the particular protocol then the communication will be very smooth and it can be very effectively done so so the rules may be very minimal or uh, it may be very complicated but if everyone is agreeing then it will be done at ease next we will see how this set of protocols is being implemented in uh, in uh, internet so there have to be some protocol rules that uh, we have to adhere and some minimal rules which will allow us to communicate all over this local area network through the internet and uh, the internet has a protocol associated with it if you want to talk on the internet your network has to support this protocol there is no way if you want to have this internet connection and the network which you in which you are it has to support the protocol in generally tcp ip is the protocol uh, that is uh, majorly used for the internet Next, we are going to see what does that internet protocol do for us. Really, what does it do? How it manages so many different protocols and enables the communication with the destination. So, now just uh, to give you some intuition about uh, what this uh, protocol is all about, it is basically something that you add. This usually involves adding a data to a method. That is what the internet protocol is all about. The regular type of data to a message. So, if you uh, ever watch an old movies or uh, uh, cop movies or detective movies, something like that, they will be talking on the radio like this, right? Hello, hello, over, over. So they will be saying some word which will be attached to each and every message, like hello. This is four five one connecting over. So this kind of messages will be transmitted if you see some of the movie. So this over, they say at the end of the every message. Didn't you notice? As soon as they say over, somebody else who is talking in the counterpart, they will they will interrupt that the communication that the sentence has been communicated by the the sentence has been ended by the the party who has initiated the communication. So and that when they are done, they just say over and outright. So this is a protocol. So the protocol here, see, I said that we've seen in the movie is that. Once you say a particular sentence and you are done with it, the uh, communicator with, within the sender and receiver will say over. So when the recipient hears the word over, it means that they have communicated the messages. Now they are waiting for the reply. So this is when I say that over, it has to be attached at each and every end of uh, the communication sentence. Then that is a protocol because I am defining a rule here that over has to be attached at the end of a sentence. So that's a protocol because. What it says is that every message, every time you send a message, you don't care really what is the content in. You don't care about the words. It will just make sure that end of the message will have over. 
and no matter what the content of the entire conversation i just make sure that the end of the conversation you will just add over as long as you follow these rules everybody who is connected can talk if you don't follow this rule then there will be entire chaos in the network if i am speaking the counterpart will also be speaking and there will be a collide and the both the parties will not able to understand what they are trying to convey to enable this convey communication a simple protocol is nothing but to attach the over keyword at the end of the sentence so if you follow the simple protocol in any communication then the communication will be very smooth so the goal of the protocol is that well communication is being taken place we want to make sure the other person that the communication is ended by the first person so that the second person can talk so overs like passing the baton to another person to talk so as long as you are had to adhere to the simple protocol it doesn't matter what you say and what is the content you can talk someone at anywhere who is just connected to the network so now there are uh, limits uh, and uh, we can say uh, demerits to that because there is no rule about how long you can talk before you say over i can say over at the end of the sentence so for that i cannot have a sentence which is very long for 5 minutes and then say over so we have to further define the protocols the first set is putting in over at the end of the sentence second that when you have to put the over so you can just talk all along the day and finally if you say over then you would be at the bottleneck to the network and there will be a really problem you also define now see first first rule is simple and second rule you have to define when you have to say the over you cannot talk for all day and you can say over and other day then it will be a really problem to the network the internet access has the rules to handle this internet protocol will have the rule to handle those kind of things there are time limits and things like this but you got the idea a protocol is basically a extra data that you add i got you got i hope you got an idea what is a protocol is your protocol is basically an extra data that is added to the message for example here i want to convey how are you i will say how are you over the extra data is added to the content which you want to convey that is what the protocol is basically does if you understand this you will understand the protocol a protocol is basically extra data that is added to your message the extra data will enable like over word will enable or it will convey to the recipient that you have completed your message there are all kinds of rules that extra data that you put here that are used to enable communication so we call those as a protocol and that is nothing but the set of rules which enable communication with minimal constraint it adds but one more thing we had to notice that it increases size of the message i do agree the over word is getting attached to a message is a little bit of overhead it's add a little bit of data but ultimately you should see it will enable us to have a consensual communication which is very more important so it adds a little bit of data to the messages but that's what the protocol is and tcp ip work with the same way like the over message is getting attached to the end of the message so that is what uh, we have discussed in this slide next we will see how this protocol is being done with the internet okay in fact specifically uh, this ip it stands for internet protocol and if you are using the internet and if you want uh, your machine to talk with lot more machine which is connected in other part of the world then it has to talk to the internet they all use the internet protocol them something but ip so they have to adhere to the rules of the ip whenever i say uh, a particular we you want to use the internet protocol then we have to adhere to the rules as dictated by the ip or tcp ip is another protocol and that protocol is it is also used in conjunction with the internet so if you use the internet you are uh, you will be using either uh, udp or uh, tcp and uh, udp and you know what is udp and uh, tcp it's a connection with tcp is a connection oriented uh, uh, communication and udp is a connectionless communication so a yeah, uni universal data gram packet if i recall protocol and uh, and you, you put uh, these together and that's an internet so you can do anything else you want you can uh, add all kinds of uh, data in the message as long as you had to get to the protocols 
so you can talk on the internet and your message can communicate with other machines on the internet so you, if you see the OSI layer uh, it divides the task uh, between the network and abstraction layer and each layer will have a very predefined functionality and each layer uses the data and uh, it will uh, keep on adding uh, some kinds of extra data like uh, this over to the header so that the communication will take place very smoothly.